Okay, so good morning, everybody. It's, um, let me tell you, it was 5.55 a while ago. Now it's 6.06. <laughs> That's not a surprise. 3.3, three, 3.3. Three, three, three. He's got a stamp the approval on that. So ever since yesterday, I um, saw the... Uh, Um, that video um, that Dana has been having the recurring dream for I um, just watching it I got chills so um, Yesterday was just a while. I, I was so worn out. I, I, I went to sleep at nine something and woke up. I, I'm not sure how long ago, but my, I've been talking with him and asking questions and getting chills. Getting chills constantly. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been quite a, an incredible ride and <laughs> ask you shall receive. I said, we need some more rain. <laughs> we got rain, it's raining right now. Sounds amazing on these metal roofs. It just lulls me right to sleep. It's just crazy. But um, if you have recently relocated, you are exactly where you need to be. Um, that's where God sent you. If you have not relocated, if you feel any kind of messages that you're getting to uproot and move, you need to follow those. Um, I'm going to add on to what I what I've learned. Um, I'm still. I mean, if if in fact people are going to be incinerated, I mean, literally before your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> down to dust well that was their choice to make that was their life they chose so no sense in getting upset over it it is what it is that's their choices they make this is where you need to suit up with your breastplate of righteousness and uh it's kind of crazy i've been saying this now for a while now i didn't even know about this guy that's been having that recurring dream that was so beyond detailed Anybody on earth that doesn't believe that, well, that's their own demons to slay again. Because, good grief, you can't get much more specific than that. <laughs> Welcome to my wigwam <laughs> with my two girls. I got one on each side. Last night I had to sleep in a diagonal because the girls were all big up bed dogs. And I just snuggle in with them because we're like a pack of dogs. It's the most, it's so fun to snuggle with them. They're so lovey. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, I am going to read a inspiring article. Um, it's Women and Warriors. It was posted 13 years ago, and it's at raremission.wordpress.com is where I'm reading it from. And it was because I, uh, a pastor, uh, what was his name? Pastor, oh, I don't have it up. Anyway, one of the one of my pastor friends on Facebook had posted this, and then I I I rolled with it. <laughs> this is what I've come up with. So um, it's a really good inspirational. What I've what I you know just reading the title and then just seeing like the first sentence and. So we'll see what it's all about totally, but there's no doubt this is going to be a home run. I already can tell. Yes, I'm hopeful I will take a nap here shortly again because I've been up too long again and not sleeping. So uh, I'm doing my work. <laughs> I'm on the watchtower. <laughs> the word of God is powerful, sharper than a sword. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Christians are told, to not be overcome by evil, but to overcome the evil with good. Romans 12, verse 21. Overcome means conquer and come out victorious. It involves fighting and winning the fight. 
We can overcome evil because we are born of God. 1 John 5, verse 4. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. Our faith is a victory that overcomes the world. And if we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we can overcome evil. 1 John 5 verse 4. Sorry, I have bed pit. I'm, I'm doing this from my wigwam. And it's still dark out. And greater is he that is in us that he is in the world. First John 4, 4. Our faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And if we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, we can overcome evil. First John 5, verse 4 through 5. God is the one who gives us victory. First Corinthians 15, verse 57. Second Corinthians 2, verse 14. Furthermore, we are told to fight the good fight of faith, 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, and wage the good warfare, 1 Timothy 1, verse 18. Wage means to fight, to be a soldier, 2 Timothy 2, verse 3, confirms that we are to good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Verse 4 goes on to say, and as Christ's soldier, do not let yourself become tied up in the affairs of this life, for then you cannot satisfy the one who has enlisted you in his army. Okay, so stop fighting their fight. Just saying. They're fighting the wrong battle. It is the devil that we are fighting right now. We are told to resist him or set ourselves against him. He is our adversary, our enemy in this battle. First Peter 5 verses 8 through 9. It is God who trains our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Psalms 144 verse 1. He gives us the needed weapons. Second Corinthians 10 verse 4 says, We use God's mighty weapons. To knock down the devil's strongholds, we are put to put on the whole armor of God, Ephesians 6 verse 11a, which is the armor of light, Romans 13 verse 12. God's armor will enable us to stand strong against the wiles, deceit, trickery of the devil, 6 11b. Our weapons include the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of God's word. Ephesians 6, verse 14 through 17. The whole armor of God. Put on all the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we are not fighting against human, be human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces. In the, in the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age so put on God's armor now. Then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attack. And after fighting to the end, you will still hold your ground. So stand, stand ready with truth as a belt tied around your waist, with righteousness as your blessed breastplate, and as your shoes the readiness to announce the good news of peace. At all times carry faith as a shield, for with you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one and accept salvation as a helmet and the word of God as a sword which the spirit gives you is all of this talk about fighting war army weapons and soldiers only for Christian men these scriptures are written to all Christians not just male ones am I saying that God wants women to fight battles also are women soldiers in God's great army they sure are. You've got that right. In fact, the Bible specifically speaks of women and their part of this in this great war. Leaving Christians no reason to doubt their importance in battles. Considering the following insights with me. One, at the dawn of creation, 
God said that it was not good for man to be alone. He knew that man needed a helper, and this is where women came in as the helper. What does this mean to women today? <laughs> Are women created to be assistants to men as they battle and subdue and rule? The Hebrew word for help is Genesis 2, verse 18 and 20 is Ezer. <laughs> it is used 21 times in the Old Testament, twice for the women, three times regarding military allies and 16 times speaking of God is our helper yes God is a helper surely he does not play the part of an assistant when he helps us nor are military allies mere assistants therefore we can conclude that when the same word is used to describe a woman the help she brings is vital wearing type help not assisting help furthermore everyone Every time Ezer is used in reference to God's help to, to us, it is used within the context of fighting and enemies. Let's look at a few examples. The God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword. Exodus 18 verse 4. Who is like you, a people saved by the Lord? The shield of your help and the sword of your majesty. Your enemies shall submit to you, and you shall tread down their high places. Deuteronomy 33, verse 29. Our souls wait for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalm 33, verse 20. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Psalm 70, verse 5. Listen to what Carolyn Custis James wrote in her book, When Life and beliefs collide. Checking the math in 19 of the 21 times, the easer appears in the Bible and in nearly 100% of the uses of the verb form. There is an overwhelming military connotation. But for some strange reason, when the same word refers to a woman, we end up talking about making babies submission and cleaning house. <laughs> Not Natalie. <laughs> No, nope. Times are changing. Whoop, whoop. I keep saying, cinch up the balls. <laughs> and they've got a choice. There's two right now. There's the only two choices right now in life. And what you're going to do to head that direction. And those wicked ways is a great place to start. Don't misunderstand making babies as wonderful submission is honorable for both men and women. And cleaning houses, human work, not, not woman's work. That needs to get done. But none of those paints an accurate picture of what God meant when he said Adam needed a helper. He meant that woman would be an ally to man standing side by side by, with man, fighting battles and expanding God's kingdom on earth. See, I'm getting nauseous again. That's the enemy, bastard. I, I'll be right back. I gotta get some sleep. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was ticking. <laughs> Okay, so I got a little sweet of seven up because it's just, it always makes me happy. When the enemy tries to attack me and make me sick, I just pour some sugar on it. <laughs> Stop in his tracks. Yum, yum, yum. Makes me happy. And these little cute cans, these mini cans are the cutest things in the world, aren't they? Well, not the cutest, but they're just darn cute. Super duper cute. I always love them. I said they're my size. I could even have them half that size. I think they do have smaller ones. So this is, oh boy, is my favorite. Yum, yum, yum.
There was no need. There was no need to fight battles before the fall, you say. So God could not have meant the first woman to be a warrior with the man. Oh no. Earth has always been a war zone. Even before people inhabited the world, the enemy was on the move. So it makes perfect sense that God used military language to mobilize Eve into action. Adam couldn't fight these battles alone. And in parentheses it says Carolyn Curtis James. The serpent was there. And God knew that what would happen between the devil and humans when he crowned with glory and honor. Psalm 8 verse 5. God knew that there would be battles and that man needed a helper to battle alongside him. Genesis 1 26 says let them have dominion. The Hebrew word for dominion is radah and means to rule dominant, tread down, sub subjugate. Man needs woman not only to bear fruit and multiply but able to help him rule and tread down all the earth. Even all her daughters and these are strong warriors who stand alongside their brothers in the battle for God's kingdom. Carolyn Curtis James. In her book, Ruby Slippers, Jonalyn Grace, Jonalyn, I think that's how you pronounce it, Jonalyn Grace Fincher wrote, Women is man's easer. She is delivering, warring, supporting, shielding, capable and vibrant female image bearer of God. What able what about putting those words in our Bible's margin to refresh our understanding of helper? No doubt. Then there's this picture, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Judges 6, verse 12. A godly woman is a woman of valor. She's a valiant woman and a strong woman. Where does the Bible say that, you ask? Ruth 3, verse 11, Proverbs 12, verse 4, 31, 19, and 31, 29. These scriptures speak of the godly woman as being virtuous, but, but that the choice of word does not do the true meaning justice at all. The Hebrew word used is chayil, C-H-A-Y-I-L, and its translations include army 56 times, man of valor 37, host 29, forces 14, valiant 13, strength 12, riches 11, wealth 10, Power, 9, 333. Substance, 8. Might, 6, 33. Strong, 5. Golden rings. <laughs> Sorry, my, I'm out of tune. And miscellaneous, 33. <laughs> Look again at those words chosen to translate. Chahil. Maybe that's how you pronounce it. The only time virtuous is used is when it speaks of woman. Of course. Let's look at those verses. All the city of my people knows that you are a Chayil woman. Ruth 3 verse 11. A Chayil woman is a crown to her husband. Who can find a Chayil woman for her price is far above rubies. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Many daughters have done Chayil, but you excel with them all. Proverbs 31, verse 29. When Chayil is used to describe men, it is translated a strong man, a valiant man, a man of valor, a mighty man of power, able men for strength of service, and men of might, strong and apt for war. In fact, Boaz is said to be a mighty man. In Ruth 2, verse 1. So we must wonder why, when the very same word is used to describe a woman, Ruth, or woman in general, it is often translated as virtuous. Perhaps it would be more accurate to say that Ruth was a mighty woman of strength, and that a woman of valor is a crown to her husband and worth more than rubies. Somewhere along the line, they forgot that. In fact, the Septuagint version of the Bible, never heard of that one, which is the ancient Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament and which Jesus quoted from, 
translates Ruth 3.11 as, Thou art a woman of power. Even today, the Hebrews have a song about the Proverb 31 woman. Their song is called, Ashet Shayil, or in English, Women of Valor. <laughs> Read more about the Hebrew song here. There's a link. I'll, I'll put this link on my, when I upload this video. Furthermore, consider what Barbara J. Yoder wrote in her book, God's Bold Call to Women. If I don't, please somebody call me out on it. So I remember sometimes my mind is going in another direction. And I need to focus. <laughs> Did you know that the word virtuous spoken of in Proverbs 31.10 is a warring word? The virtuous woman is a warrior woman. She is strong, able, forceful, and powerful. She is the one who is willing to go to the battle, to battle. In the Hebrew language, the word virtuous actually pictures her as one single woman coming with the strength of an army. Women of valor are strong women. Strong in character, yes, but also strong physically, mentally, and spiritually. Yes, that we are. Took me a while to get here, people, but I'm here. Proverbs 31 says that she strengthens her arm, verse 17, and is clothed with strength, verse 25. Indeed, such a woman needs to be strong to fight the bat battles God calls her to. A woman of valor is a worth far more than rubies and is crowned to the man who marries her. Psalm 68.11 says, The Lord gives instructions. The women who announce the good news are a large army. Women, yes, not all, Bible, not all Bible versions translate this verse correctly. But the GWT, NAS, ASB, BBE, ERV, YLT, and AMP do. That's why I'm telling you. That's why I don't like the versions of the Bible. It is speaking specifically about an army of women. These women are waging war and preaching or bearing the good news. The result of these women warring is seen in verse 12. Kings of armies flee. They flee. And she who remains at home divides the spoil. <laughs> no kidding. In his, in his book, Women, God's Secret Weapon, that's why I said, was, I said, I'm the wild card. Well, we're, us women, we're the wild card. <laughs> I didn't want the cat out of the bag before it was, I was supposed to say anything. <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to share and what I'm not to. <laughs> I'm sure that guy, I can't even imagine Dana with that, having the same dream over and over. And what are you supposed to do with it? You get these messages, you don't know what you're supposed to do with them. Are you supposed to share them right now? Or are you supposed to wait till the right time? I say time is everything with him. So now I know why. Now I can share what I some more stuff that I know. Everything's starting to line up. So in his book, well, I'm going to start back. The result of these women wearing is seen, is seen in verse 12. Kings of armies flee, they flee, and she who remains at home divides the spoil. In his book, Women, God's Secret Weapon, Ed Silvoso wrote, The idea of women who proclaim glad tidings, defeating evil kings, is so extraordinary that to make sure this novel point is not lost, the next verse reiterates, She spoils always belong to the victor. About Psalm 68, Ed Silvoso goes on to say, when you lie down among the sheepfolds, you are like the wings of a dove covered with silver and its pinions with glistening gold, verse 13. This verse compares the wearing men, women to doves lying down on sheepfolds, their wings covered with silver and their pinions adorned with gold. Sheepfolds are sheepskins used to cover the floor inside a tent, even if they came from white sheep. After a period of use, their colors to gray. If silver-colored doves are placed on gray sheepfolds, they become inconspicuous for lack of contrast. 
even the gold rings on their pinions do not attract attention because the doves lie on them. What we hear, have here is women camouflaged as doves lying low, a treasure hidden underneath. The next verse states, when the Almighty scattered the kings there, it was snowing in Zalman, verse 14. What is the meaning of the snow and why is Zalman mentioned? If multitudes of dove descends on an area, <laughs> the place will look as if it's covered with snow. This happened in a location identified as Zalman. The little known elevation holds an important key. Okay, well, my morning doves, doves have been here. And there were a pair that yesterday morning. No, yes, last evening when we were going, me and Hannah Grace were going to sunset, there were two, a pair of them. My morning doves, they found me here. I always have them. I've always had morning doves. My whole life, they've always followed me wherever I've gone. Always. Always. No matter where I'm at. Abimelech, the son of Gideon, through one of his concubines, made Zalman infamous. This evil character killed in order to rule. See Judges 8, verse 32, 9 through 6. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. <laughs> Abimelech defeated its army, the people of Shechem, and murdered most of its inhabitants. Judges 9, verses 43 through 45. However, a thousand men and women fled to a fortified tower. At that moment, Abimelech climbed Mount Zalman to show his army how to cut branches from trees. Once they had enough firewood, they transported it to the lower chamber of the tower. They set it on fire and burnt alive 1,000 men and women. Judges 9, verse 49. Wow. Next, Abimelech went to Thebes, a nearby town, and captured it. But some of the people also took refuge in another tower. He decided to burn them alive, just as he had done to the people of Shechem. However, as Abimelech approached the tower, a woman threw a millstone that landed on his head, crushing his skull. Judges 9, verse 53. Wow. As he lay moribund, he was more distressed by the fact that a woman had brought him down than he was concerned about his impending death. Consequently, he commanded his armor bearer to draw your sword and kill me, lest it be said of me, a woman slew him. Judges 9 verse 54. The reference to Mount Zalman ties the events to Psalm 68, to the final crushing of Satan's head and the role woman will play in it. The parallels of significant Abimelech, the personification of evil, had his head crushed by a woman by showing his army how to cut branches that could then be used as firewood to turn an otherwise impregnable tower into a human prey. He transformed a common tree into a devastating new weapon. This is similar to how Satan turned the tree in the garden into a lethal weapon. Undoubtedly, his victory of Shechem gave him great confidence. Yet when he tried the same ploy a second time, a woman crushed his head because he had a chance to repeat it. Likewise, Satan appears to be ahead of the game right now because Eve's transgression has resulted in a significant oppression of women. Consequently, he does not feel threatened by their lowly state. Satan succeeded once again. He believes he can do it again, except that his head will soon be crushed. So that means women, like I said, arm yourself up, suit yourself up, free yourself from anything afflicting you. Surrender. Surrender. We're about to save the world with him. You need to be strong. Break free of those chains that are keeping you down. As was read above, El Silvoso mentioned the world women will play in the final crushing of Satan's head. There I am. I've never read this. This brings us to our last confirmation that women were created to fight battles with men, with the men. What role is Mr. Silvoso speaking of? 
To answer that, we need to consider two key chapters in the Bible, Genesis 3 and Revelation 12. Intermission, I need a swig. I'm getting dry. This is just so yummy, it makes me happy. When you tell man, don't screw me over, and they do, well, this is what happens. <laughs> I was honest. I was truthful. <laughs> Can't be much more truthful than that. You made your bed. You got, you got two choices. <laughs> your choice. In Genesis 3, the serpent chose the woman as her primary target. His primary target. She fell into his deception and disobeyed along with her husband. Bad, it was a bad decision. But you know what? We learn from our decisions. Well, yeah, we do. <laughs> when God asked Adam if he ate from the tree that he was commanded not to eat from, Adam answered, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. In essence, Adam admitted that he disobeyed God, but he put the blame on the woman. <laughs> of course he did. He went and went to take responsibility for his choices. It's her fault, not his own. It's not just all about Adam now, or about Eve now, is it? Adam didn't take responsibility back then. She did. She didn't realize what she had done was wrong. She learned that. <laughs> Adam was not deceived, 1 Timothy 2, verse 14, and so he knew that eating that fruit was wrong, and yet he blamed Eve and probably even God. Adam therefore covered his transgressions and hid his iniquity, as it says in Job, Job 31, verse 33. <laughs> Eve, on the other hand, was thoroughly deceived. Don't get me wrong, she did sin, but she did not do it so knowingly. Exactly. 1 Timothy 2, verse 14, and 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, make it clear that she was deceived. In the book, God's Word to Women, Catherine Bushnell wrote, Satan must have rejoiced as much in Adam's attitude toward God in charging him with folly as in Adam's attitude towards himself, the tempter, tempter in shielding him from blame. It is not the scene, this conduct on the part of Adam, to which Job refers when he complains. If like Adam, I covered my transgressions by hiding my iniquity in my bosom. Adam advanced to the side of the serpent and becoming a false accuser of God. Eve, on the other hand, told the truth. The fact that the serpent deceived her was simply the truth. As we can see in the scriptures I shared above, regarding Eve's confession, Margaret English writes in removing the veil, because she is not lying, but confessing the truth. She is not blaming the serpent, but rather exposing him. By exposing the serpent, she initiated God's judgment upon him. Wow. Are you listening, Phil Wagaman? I hope so. That truth that Eve revealed, who the real enemy was, that it was not God or her partner, is further confirmed in a very amazing fact in Dr. Frank Seekin's book, Hebrew Word Pictures. He shared how the word Ezer, helper, is composed of two word pictures in ancient Hebrew, an eye and a picture of someone with a hatchet representing the enemy. A literal, literal interpretation means one who sees the enemy. So Eve saw and exposed Satan for being their enemy. Now if you were the devil, how would you feel toward the one who exposed your true nature? In Genesis 3 verse 15, God tells the serpent, 
because you have done this. Cursed are you. I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. An enmity is very strong hatred, and what can we see if we look at the word enemy? What did I say the other day? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> the woman, not the man, became a special enemy of Satan. As a result, womankind became a special target of the enemy's rage. A war began at that moment between Satan and womankind. Satan has a special hatred toward women, which is why they have been subjudicated, enslaved, humiliated, abused in every generation and culture. Margaret English do you see how the enmity between the devil and the woman accounts for the horrific treatment women have suffered and still do suffer? Satan's goal has been to oppress silence women and silence women. He knows God's plans for them and he knows that if women discovered that God really proposed them for and rose up to their destinies, his complete demise would be closer than ever. The book of Revelation can be a confusing one. In chapter 12, the key protagonist is a woman clothed with the sun. I have been my entire life clothed in the sun. And there's not a doctor on earth that's going to tell me I'm allergic to the sun. They kiss my tail in. That's man's BS. There are many theories as to what this woman represents. Possibly the church or the nation of Israel, Margaret English wrote. Almost all the theories completely skip the obvious. That she simply represents the woman. The passage is replete with imagery from the Garden of Eden. First, we see that she is in pain to give birth. What was the first word about the first woman, Eve? She would give birth in pain, and her seed would crush the head of the serpent. The imagery of the garden continues as we see the serpent from the garden standing before the woman about to give birth, so that when she gave birth, he might devour her child. We also see the devil's enmity or rage and hatred toward the woman and toward her seed as prophesied in the garden. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. Verse 9, 333. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman. The dragon was enlarged with the woman and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Revelation 12 is about a woman, the devil and the woman's seed. So is Genesis 3.15. Revelation 12 speaks of the devil's deception and his enmity with the woman. So does Genesis 3 verse 15. Catherine Bushnell wrote, just as the covenant promises of Genesis 3 verse 15 was fulfilled to a literal woman up to a certain extent in the birth of Jesus Christ, so will it be to the end. The beginning, the fulfillment was to one woman, but it seems more likely that the filling out to the full of the terms of that great covenant will be to many of that sex, a body of women. Amen. So is it God's will for a woman to be a warrior? Are women to fight the enemy side by side with their brothers in faith? I love this quote from Carolyn Cus Curtis J James. It is the crown of our womanhood, the essence of true femininity, the highest praise ever accorded a female that it should be said of any of us. She was a brave and godly soldier in the army of the Lord. Wowzers. Woo, is that a whole <laughs> I'm like, is there more? Can we read more? <laughs> oh. 
looks like there might be something else I read, might read here, so stay tuned. It's I'm not sure the sun's gonna come up yet. It looks like well, I don't know, it might clear off, but it's it's getting cloudy. It's, I'm telling you. Don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Because he's coming. And if you think he's not, well, that's your choice. If you don't want to believe, that's your choice. But when you start pe seeing people light up in flames, you'll understand the magnitude of this. You'll understand the magnitude of this. Look around. This is a spiritual war. This is good versus evil right now, and that's all it is. And it's been it's been building and building and building and building and building. So stay tuned. I've got more coming up. Love to all. Bunches and bunches. Suit up, women. Get your Wonder Woman out. Wear it proudly. We've got this. We can do this. Let's fight. Let's fight this fight together. We need to unite this country with love. Lots of it. And we know how to do it. Straight from our beloved hearts that he so beautifully gave it to us. So, stay tuned. I've got more coming up soon. Love you all bunches and bunches. Bye.